नमस्ते एंड जय हिंद अनदर कॉन्वर्जेशन लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन ऑन द डेटा पैराडॉक्स विथ सम वन हु सीम्स टू हैव अ पॉश ऑफ अर थिंकिंग अ हेड ऑफ द कर्व स्पेशली वेन इट कम्स टू दी साइबर वर्ल्ड द टेक वर्ल्ड एंड विच एज टू वी सो the author of winning in the D digital age he is in the course of writing or penning his third book what we are talking about book number 2 and that's mastering the data paradox so nitin said thank you for joining us again and uh, for uh, sitting down with us to have a conversation around this data paradox uh, you are a entrepreneur you are a founder yourself you are an author and you are looking at trends all around us from a bharatiya perspective or from an indian perspective how would you define this data paradox as to where we are as a nation and what do we do about it um so anand dir it's a fascinating time for the world and um, i think for bharat in particular uh, we are in the in the digital data and ai age um it's a very very i would say significant point in the course of human progress hmm um you know the world has probably gone through um 200 large general innovations you know fire wheel being two of them and i think ai is now the 200 mm -hmm. uh and probably the most um significant one so you know i'm you know reminded of that you know when i was young you know we used to have this star trek on sundays mm, yeah. and that had this opening line you know to go where boldly go where no man has gone before i think we're at that point okay and um, you know this digital data ai age is truly disruptive it is truly disruptive you know because it is getting to some fundamental human competencies uh, which you know have you know which as humans we have always said this is innate to us mm. you know problem identification it's not just about automation or some you know analysis or data crunching this is very fundamental human competencies like you know as i said problem identification um you know or um you know or kind of self learning uh you know these are very very kind of innate human traits so it's fascinating where that will go but uh, for sure every industry is going to get disrupted hmm yeah hmm. every industry is going to get disrupted you know this digital data and ai will enable hyper personalization hmm yeah and so far in the course of human history it has been that scale has meant standardization right now you can have scale with with very individual kind of an offering yeah mm. you go to netflix i go to netflix we see very different things it's Correct. very very personalized what is happening in entertainment what is happening in shopping will happen in every industry mm. now that will create hundreds of thousands of problems and also opportunities and i think that's a tremendous opportunity for india Hmm. and that's a tremendous opportunity for entrepreneurs in india hmm. yeah because all these problems you know we have big tech on one hand right yeah but big tech ca can't solve all of these problems it will need entrepreneurs to solve these specific problems hmm. and i believe that india has now reached that point of maturity in terms of our tech readiness the tech industry that we have you know the digital public infrastructure that we have in the form of of aadhar stack you know our kind of digital native population that we are amazingly poised to leverage this digital data and ai age hmm. and leapfrog now in data also comes big data we are looking at bharat with a 140 crore population there are two conundrums two issues one is what do i do with all this data and how do i mine this data so can ai be used effectively to not just mine but also to integrate so i pull uh, uh, you know information from one data set integrate that with another data set and try and help the common bharatiya that's one the second point is we want to turn manufacturing we want to create labor intensive <laughs> industry and here you are pushing ai which is seen as a job uh, cannibal or you know cannibalizes jobs that's how the perception is so how do we navigate this yeah it's a, it's not an easy one anand so um i think it's kind of a little bit of a party line to say that oh you know uh ai will you know take away jobs ai will create jobs um hmm. while that is true in the short term hmm. uh you know if you look at numbers over the next 3 to 5 years roughly it seems like similar numbers hmm. of jobs lost and jobs created maybe jobs 
created a 10 20% less than the job lost okay but i do believe that over a period of time ai is going to have a big impact on jobs hmm. yeah this is so let's not avoid that let's hmm. not avoid that because you know it's a reality yeah and i think especially for us where manufacturing but also our tech services correct you know our large tech services industry which is a very big export earner for us is largely based on labor yeah and even that you know forget manuf- you know manufacturing of course that's where we want to play but even our you know crown jewel you know tech services will get impacted right. you know with with ai so so i think this is something we have to be very mindful of hmm. we have to be very mindful of but then let me get to your first point hmm. yeah where i think we may have some positive news and and perhaps answers to this job loss india is in a unique position hmm. because we are the largest source of data in the world correct yeah now we have you know three large systems you know we have us with the big tech we have china we have india china is a close system mm. yeah so that's a different now you know it's kind of interesting that you know us is very tech rich yeah and india is very data rich right yeah so and ai is all driven by data yeah correct so india has a great great opportunity in this ai age to become the data generator of the world mm. but this data also poses a challenge because we are uh, we've left this data unattended we this this data is not secure this data is available for anybody to poach mine and also influence now do you believe ai can play a role in trying to also serve somewhere project you know protect my digital sovereignty or somewhere protect my uh, identity as a nation uh, from perhaps big tech from perhaps those entities who want to control how this nation thinks how this nation behaves how this nation consumes and that's data colonization so many many yeah yeah i <laughs> know deep, I, deep, I, deep stands in that question <laughs> yeah uh, let me try to unpack them so first uh, data and ai have a have a very recursive relationship okay so data is the input for ai hmm. ai happens because of data hmm. yeah but equally ai can be used data has many problems right okay. so you know you are holding my book you know, right. it's called mastering the data paradox. paradox yeah what is the data paradox the data paradox is that you have a data deluge at one hand yeah but you actually have a insights drought yeah because you know all that deluge in itself I is a very know what to do about this you, you it's a, you can't handle it mm. yeah and you know you can't handle it it leads to more and more of a drought yeah yeah so and if you look at you know again kind of drill down what is causing the deluge a very big issue is data quality hmm. yeah. yeah because garbage in garbage out garbage out Correct. yeah so how do you handle data quality the other big issue which you talked about is data security yeah because data security is that achilles you know heel you know that's the which can bring down all of my beautiful you know palace mm. right mm. so data quality and data security are the two biggest issues mm. in this big data world and ai actually is the way to solve them mm. yeah so there is i would even submit that there is no way to solve for data quality and data security but to use ai mm. yeah uh, and and the, well the if we talk about data security also the issue is that the the attackers are probably among the smartest users of technology out there correct and you know running a tech company and you know and i've seen it with my clients who have been attacked we have been attacked hmm. yeah and it was definitely the attackers were definitely using ai yeah okay they were definitely using ai hmm. so you are you are dealing with very very sophisticated users of technology and the only way you can you can kind of protect yourself is by using ai even more smartly hmm. so the first point you made uh, fully agree Right. fully agree so data and ai are like they are both a cause and effect of each other you know they have to they have to go together i think the other strand you know which you kind of was about data biases yeah and the potential for data colonization i think both of these are very very significant issues that um i think we have become aware of the answers are not easy hmm. um you know let's first talk about data bias hmm. um now at a at a simple level data bias at a enterprise level right you know for example you know your credit card hmm. uh service and you know 
what type of um, messages they should be sending you or not, which is driven by AI. Correct. And, you know, how do you get the bias right in that? You know, look, that's one type of problem, which you can address by solving for the right quality of data, the right amount of data. Got it. Yeah. The issue becomes even more when it is deliberate. Hmm. Now, you know, in our body, we have WBCs. Now, the <laughs> WBCs are the good soldiers, and when they become cancerous, they become the bad soldiers. Mm -hmm. So, AI, does it have this dual game? And how do I develop tech or use AI to help me identify the real from the fake? That's one of the points. The other part is when I am having sitting on a, like you said, a data deluge. How do I ensure to filter out the data that is relevant, one, but that is true and factual? So does AI come into play here? And can we as a nation think in that direction? See, again, and I think there are different type of issues. You know, there yeah. is the, you know, AI, good and bad. Correct. And the bad aspects of AI, how do you control that? Mm. And then I think there are, you know, how do you sift data? Yeah. yeah and... See, again, the second one is a simpler one. Hmm. Um, there is certainly something about, uh, you know, how do you sift uh, data, relevant data from non-relevant data. Hmm. And AI has some role to play in that, Anand. Hmm. But mostly I would say it is about a balance of what I call physical and logical. Okay. Or what I say is that so far, the approach to data has been a technology approach hmm. that let me get all of this together hmm. okay once I get it together then I will do something with it the hmm. problem is that it keeps on growing 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 uh, you can't get it together and it becomes so much hmm. that your ability to ferret out what is really re relevant becomes very very it becomes very difficult so the approach I'm recommending is that you have to narrow the big data to actually make sense of it Okay. And which is a logical approach comes in that you have to start by saying, okay, these are my problem statements. Hmm. This is what I'm looking to solve. These hmm. are my use cases. And with that, you know, okay, let me think through what I need. Hmm. And let me try to then get that data hmm. specifically. Hmm. Yeah, as opposed to trying to look at this entire universe. Hmm. Right. So I think that gets to your second question that, you know, the way to make it more relevant isn't mm. necessarily a technology answer. Okay. Is a more of a business and logic answer. And today, the link between business and logic and technology is rather tenuous. Mm. Yeah. So that's the second part of it. The first part of your question is a much deeper problem. Yeah. Right. That AI, good or bad. Look, I think the the easiest analogy uh, is nuclear power. Correct. That nuclear power is certainly a source of good, hmm. a great source of clean energy. Hmm. But um, there is a reason why it is restricted so much. Correct. Because it can destroy the planet. Yeah. It still might. Yeah, And AI is like that. There is a human being <laughs> who's coding, who's writing this code that is allowed to self-learn and also to adapt. But in trying to make life better, are we trying to make it much easier? And in trying to make life easier, are we making the human race dumber? So, you know, like they say, Terminator said age of the machines or rise of the machines, and it was all fantasy. But is that going to be a reality? See, it's, um, I think it has been happening for 10,000 years or more uh -huh. that uh, with every, every uh, each of those 200 general innovations, the human being has lost some faculties. Hmm. So if you think about the hunter-gatherer, yeah. the hunter-gatherer was using a much wider array hmm. of faculties. Correct. And still could finish the day in, in hmm. one third of their time and then kind of rest for the re rest two thirds, right? Hmm. So uh, we have decreased the range, the breadth of... Um, those if, faculties. Of those faculties. But the ones that we are using, we are going deeper in them. Hmm. Yeah, so the ability to interpret, to visualize, to construct, you know, those are, have, you know, certainly increased, hmm. you know, whereas, you know, many of our physical abilities or, you know, have, you know, have kind of really gone down. One aspect is we've got to decide. Creation and destruction go hand in hand. Technology for good and bad, 
for as as a nation as a people as a government we have to perhaps decide how we want to address this paradox was a good read and i'm going to read it through the full and i look forward to our next conversation always a pleasure speaking with you nitinji thank you so much thank you anand